Well, in, in the old, what we call the Old Testament, uh, the prophet Isaiah speaks of a servant, servant of the Lord, who will uh, suffer and suffer on behalf of his people, in fact, bear their sins. It's a very interesting passage. And uh, interpreters in antiquity weren't sure what to make of it. Was this Israel's king who would suffer, Israel's Messiah? And some understood it that way. Jesus understood it that way and applied it uh, to his own ministry in that light, which uh, may have been an innovation, maybe not. We just don't know. Uh, the, uh, we also have the Son of Man figure in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, he isn't said specifically to suffer. He receives authority and kingdom from God. But then the passage continues about how the saints struggle. And this goes on for the rest of Daniel chapter 7 right to the end. And so seen in that light, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, the son of man figure and the struggle that then follows his appearance, I could see how someone might deduce from that that the royal Messiah, the messianic king, could indeed suffer. When you have a passage that talks about how after two days God will revive us, on the third day he will raise us up, which ancient interpreters understood in reference to the resurrection. You can see how that might be applied also uh, to the Messianic King. And Jesus does that. I have no doubt that's where uh, his prophecy after three days or on the third day, that kind of language comes right out of Hosea 6.2 understood as it was understood in his time in the Aramaic speaking synagogue. And Jesus applies it to himself. So there are some suggestive passages. You also have the book of Psalms where the, you have the righteous sufferer. Actually the Messiah himself in Psalm 89, how long, O oh Lord? You know, well, I have to put up with this. The suffering uh, righteous person in Psalm 22 who's surrounded whose hands and feet have been pierced. And of course, the Psalms were closely linked to David. Everyone knew that David didn't write all of them, but he wrote many of them. And so the Psalter as a whole was seen almost as a Davidic book. And so if you have Psalms that talk about suffering, you have prophecies that talk about suffering, you have the Son of Man vision who comes before God himself and receives the kingdom, and there's a struggle that follows. I can see how a, a, a theology of a suffering messianic king could begin to uh, develop and it could come to expression in someone like Jesus as he tries to teach his own disciples that as the son of man, he needs to suffer too. And then he goes on to talk about how he will you know, pour out his own life, uh, what he says to his disciples who bicker over sitting at his right or his left, and he tells them the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and pour out his life as a ransom for many. Or the words of institution at the Last Supper, where his, this is his body, this is his blood given for you. And so uh, I think that's what Jesus has done. He's pulled together these strands in talking about himself as the anointed king who will suffer for his people.